Hi, I'm John Corvino. You know, some people object to same-sex relationships on the grounds that they're unnatural. But what does that mean and why does it matter? Think about all of the unnatural things that you've done today. You woke up this morning. Did you wait for a rooster to crow? No, you probably set an alarm clock. Alarm clocks, not natural. You bathed, I hope. Did you jump in a lake? No, you probably took a shower, used plumbing, not natural. And you're sitting here looking at me on this little plastic and metal box. Not natural. And yet when people say homosexuality is unnatural, that's supposed to stop the debate somehow. When I've asked people to explain, I've gotten some pretty funny answers about what they mean. Some have said, well, of course it's unnatural. Animals don't do that. Since when did animals start providing us with our moral standards, especially in the area of sex? Think about that the next time you're humping some stranger's leg. Animals don't provide us with our moral standards, and if they did, well, second, animals do do that. In fact, not only do they engage in homosexual sex, some actually form same-sex pair bonds. People are always sending me studies about this sort of thing. Gay penguins in Central Park. It's true, you can look it up. Lesbian seagulls. Lesbian seagulls? What do they have, like short haircuts and Birkenstocks or something? It's all very interesting. It's not going to solve any moral problems for us. And then they say, no, 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 that's not what we mean. We mean it violates the natural purpose of the sexual organs, which is procreation. Except that a lot of our organs have multiple purposes. I can use my mouth for talking, for singing, for breathing, for licking envelopes, for blowing bubbles, for kissing a woman, or for kissing a man. And it seems very arbitrary to say, well, all of those are natural except the last one. Now, obviously, one purpose of the sexual organs is procreation. But is that the only legitimate purpose? Straight people often have sex even when they don't want children, don't want children yet, don't want any more children, or can't have children. Why? Because they recognize that sex has other important purposes, like expressing affection, building intimacy, pursuing sexual joy for its own sake. And if it's okay for straight people to pursue these aims, even when procreation is not a factor, it seems inconsistent and unfair to say that it's unnatural for gay people to pursue the exact same aims. But people still want to insist that it's unnatural, and I say, why? And they say, plumbing. Plumbing? Yes, plumbing. The parts don't fit. And when people tell me that the parts don't fit, I have a very simple response. Yes, they do. Because if they didn't, people would try it, it wouldn't work, and they'd do something else. I mean, think about what that scenario would look like. Oh my God, the parts don't fit. What are we going to do? I don't know. You want to go bowling? Sure, this is not working. I have actually had people say to me, well, of course it's wrong because... And I want to say, if you're doing it this way, you're doing it wrong. And the more serious response to this is, anytime we reduce people and their lives and their relationships to this, to parts, that's dehumanizing. And it's ironic because it's usually opponents of homosexuality who say that we treat sex as this base animalistic thing devoid of meaning, when in fact that's what they're doing in this case. Frankly, I think when people say homosexuality is unnatural, it's just a fancy dressed up way of saying it's icky. And that's no substitute for a serious moral argument. I mean, really? What does lesbianism look like to these people?